Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Lake MRI, and this is a 60-year-old female. I just happened to speak with her in the reception area, um, asking about her complaints, and she said she had a new onset of seizure disorder for the past 18 months, and they're pretty atypical seizures. She said she would uh, just lose track of time and would be doing work around the house or picking things off the floor and not even remember doing them and uh, they would be intermittent and just recently she had a syncopal episode and the doctor thought maybe it was uh, just a more severe seizure uh, but she thought maybe it was just syncopal and in the end the doctor just wanted her to get an MRI to make totally sure nothing was going on so this is a sagittal T2 weighted sequence and we see here the cella does have fluid within it and a 60 year old this is pretty common and mostly just incidental if the cell is not expanded and has fluid you say well there's deficiency of the diaphragm cella over time the um, fluid will push down and flatten the pituitary tissues along the floor producing this appearance of a partially empty cella as long as it's not expanded and they're this age you know, almost always this is a normal finding but in this patient she also had some prominence of the optic nerve sheath complex is not really that well seen there. And this you can see a little bit better. With age, this can also be a normal finding, and this is more borderline. But this is something to look for when you see the um, deficiency of the diaphragm cella. And you can see here the optic nerve sheaths, this white fluid surrounding the optic nerves. Um, these are a little bit prominent, a little bit distended. But again, the patient's 60, so this is a borderline finding. If they were uh, 30 years old, you get worried. And in that case, you'd worry about elevated intracranial pressure or pseudotumor cerebri. And in this patient, um, we might suggest that. But there's one other finding, which is the uh, dural venous sinuses. It's so always mentioned, you know, if the vascular structures are open. And the superior sagittal sinus, you don't really see the typical dark band that we see on this. Um, but again, this is just an MRI. There's no contrast. can be a difficult finding. So we put up our axial T2 sequence here. And look here, and it looks like the superior sagittal sinus is just small not really well seen and again normally you see a nice black triangle here so this is a lack of the normal flow void within the superior sagittal sinus if we put up the t1 weighted images here really it's gray in here and so that is not quite normal either and if we put up our flare sequence we see some bright signal up here up high so this is worrisome for a superior sagittal sinus thrombosis I just found another random patient here, so I could look and uh, look at their dural venous sinuses. So here's superior sagittal sinus. There's this dark area between the brain and the skull here, right here. The bone is dark, so it's hard to see, but anyway, you can imagine this little dark line coming down through here. If we put up axial images, let's try these axial flare sequence. Uh, we can see this dark area down here. There it is. Looks like the flow void within the sinus. We go up to the top. You see this still pretty dark in here. And on the T2 weighted sequence, we see the flow void right here, and the axles shows up really well. So this is a, in a normal patient right here. Now we're going to go to this current patient. And by contrast, we see that there's bright signal here on the flare. So again, this is really highly suspicious for sinus thrombosis. And here's the T2 weighted sequence. Instead of seeing that nice dark, round, dark area of flow void, it's uh, don't really see much of anything. And on this view here, on the prior patient, we had this dark band right here beneath the skull. It looked like two areas of darkness together, and this is a dark and now bright. So this is the area where I believe there's some thrombosis. And these things may all go together. The uh, sinus thrombosis can lead to elevated intracranial pressure, and it could cause the um, deficiency of the diaphragm cella here and the optic nerve sheath distension. And it also could uh, lead to seizures. So this may be the etiology for her new onset of seizure disorder as well. One other just incidental aside here, probably there's a little area here. This is the right petrous apex. We have a little bit of asymmetric fluid signal here. Now in this patient, she had no complaints relating to this. And so this is probably just some uh, sterile fluid within a pneumatized petrous air cell. If they have inflammation, they call that uh, petrous apocytis or gratinigos. Uh, or Gradenigo syndrome, and here on the right we see this T1 weighted sequence. It really is not that bright. If we're brighter than this, we might think about a cholesteatoma. But again, a sterile fluid could produce the same thing. So just threw that in, uh, probably just an incidental aside. Anyway, thank you very much.